artillery, big guns, 20 kilometer snipers, the hammer on the battlefield, the stuff of nightmares for enemy troops. Today, artillery is far more than big guns. Close air support, intelligence gathering, counter battery, Modern artillery is one of the most decisive elements of contemporary land combat. Artillery is the king of battle. Three, set, go! Canadian Forces Base Wainwright, located in the grasslands of Alberta. Training ground of warriors. Its 620 square kilometers of training area are used for live fire artillery, armored, and infantry training. This is where the Canadian Army does some of its toughest work, preparing soldiers to meet any threat, to win in battle, to survive combat. The 5 RALC, known as 5 Regiment d'Artillerie Légère du Canada, is training at Wainwright to prepare for deployment to Afghanistan. This artillery unit has to get it right. Lives depend on them. Two thousand kilometers to the south, the U.S. Army is doing similar training. Fort Irwin is located in Southern California in the sweltering heat of the Mojave Desert. Over 2,500 square kilometers in size, this enormous training base is larger than Rhode Island. Every week, this massive training facility is home to thousands of soldiers who are prepping for deployment to hotspots around the world. One of the units training is B Battery 37 Field Artillery. This reserve unit is based in Hawaii and is getting ready to deploy to Iraq in less than two months. It's their job to protect the infantry and armor in combat. Protect them through accurate and superior firepower. It's a big responsibility. These gunners understand that. Both coalition armies are sending artillery units to hotspots in the Middle East. Why? Because artillery is one of the most effective means of supporting infantry and armor in combat. Major Warren Smith explains what the role of artillery is on the battlefield and why it's so critical to infantry and armor. Artillery in the Army is used to, uh, to provide the, uh, the, the all-arms team provides fire support, uh, suppression and uh, neutralization of an objective uh, while the maneuver elements maneuver into position and close with and destroy the enemy. They, uh, it inflicts damage and casualties on the enemy and also keeps, keeps the enemy's head down during an advance of friendly forces. That's in the offensive. And in the defensive, it can, uh, it can uh, break up enemy advances and, uh, prevent, and uh, inflict damage and casualties on the enemy during their advance. Well, it's important for us as gunners to, uh, to practice uh, live firing a great deal. In fact, 
almost every time that we do go out on an exercise, it is live firing. Uh, and that's in the interest of, uh, of honing skills, honing drills, and in the, the search of perfection in order to make sure that we can bring in our fire support as close to um, the supported arm maneuvering, moving on the ground, the infantry and the armor, um, as possible to, uh, to cover that young, young frightened man who's advancing on the battlefield and to bring him in as close as possible to prevent the enemy from engaging him until he's in range to engage the enemy. One of the important goals for 5 RALC and 37 field artillery is to provide close gunnery support on the battlefield. Its tactical title is Danger Close. Translation, putting high explosive shells within 300 meters of friendly troops. That's close, real close. But there are concerns about the abilities of all the soldiers that have come to CFB Wainwright and Fort Irwin. Many are new, untested, with little real training. Both these two soldiers right here, this is their first time being out here. And Specialist Ayala, he came from Fort Sill. He was on a pallet on a different type of artillery piece. So this is his first time really being down here, being able to learn this. And now in artillery, you know, half the time we're infantrymen, half the time we're artillerymen. So we lose our skills, you know. So this is a good chance for us to come back and learn our actual job, our MOS. That's what makes this so good. It's a good chance for us to take a break from all the infantry stuff and come back and do our actual job, blowing things up. American and Canadian gunners are training hard to prep their units for deployment in Iraq and Afghanistan. They have new soldiers, new young officers. They need to practice and hone their skills. Accuracy and precision are decisive on the battlefield. It wasn't always that way. In the First World War, artillery was one of the dominant weapon systems on the battlefield. The Germans invented indirect fire, which allowed artillery to shoot at distant unseen targets. Everyone quickly copied them. Each side built up huge masses of guns, all with a single purpose of hammering their enemy into submission. Accuracy was only of moderate interest. The key was to put as many artillery shells on your enemy as quickly as possible. Today, Accuracy and precision are everything. Artillery batteries have to be able to lay down barrages of deadly fire close to friendly forces. Very close, as combat in Afghanistan is proving. So they have to get it right, every time. The infantry depend on them. Modern artillery and ammunition has the ability to do this. Light Howitzer, 105 mm Designed to support highly mobile forces. Maximum effective range, 19 kilometers. Maximum rate of fire, 12 rounds per minute. The 105 mm is the workhorse of most coalition armies. The latest gun American and Canadian artillery has acquired is the M777, produced by BAE Systems. The U.S. Marine Corps is using this system in Iraq. Range 24 kilometers. Rate of fire, six rounds per minute. Extended range with guided munitions, 40 kilometers. This system is very light and mobile, capable of being airlifted, towed, or carried in planes. While most of the artillery units in the Army await the new M777 howitzers, they continue to train and deploy with the venerable 105mm. This gun has won the admiration of gunners throughout the world for mobility, simplicity, and lethality. Second Lieutenant Natasha Skidmore of 5RALC 
told us how this system works. This is a 105 uh, howitzer. This is the barrel. Uh, inside the barrel, you can see the rifling on the inside, which isn't as evident with most arms, but you can really see it. Helps with accuracy and also the range. This is uh, part of the recoil system, which uh, takes a lot of, when we're firing such high caliber rounds, it takes a lot of the stress off the gun and a lot of the components by using it. This is the Tannoy box, and this is how we communicate. We string up a wire to the box to our command post, and all the orders for the guns with the bearings and elevations, um, all the different, the different things we can do with the gun are issued through the box. And this is the lunette, which with, we, uh, when we close the trails, we can tow the howitzer. This is the breech. We insert the rounds here. We use the pull cord to fire. Uh, these wheels adjust the elevation of the gun and also the bearing. We apply numbers on the sight, level the bubbles, and we're ready to fire. So how do artillery rounds work? And what are the different types of shells? How has technology improved artillery shells? It's the ammunition that artillery fires that makes it so deadly on the battlefield. From high explosive airburst shells to illumination rounds that turn night into day. There are three basic types of artillery shells and fuses used today. The first is a proximity fused round. These are meant to burst above troops and light armored vehicles. These shells dispense a large amount of shrapnel into the air. The shrapnel will cut down attacking troops or send them scurrying for shelter. The second is known as point detonation. These bullets are fused to explode on contact with the ground or targets. The third type is known as delay. This allows the bullet to dig into the ground slightly before exploding. The result is greater damage on hard contacts or shelters. Warrant Officer Rene Parker explained more about artillery shells and what types there are. Your high explosive projectile uh, used for uh, blast or fragmentation defeats uh, solid objects, building structures, soft skin vehicles, and light armored vehicles. The fragmentation or the breaking up of the projectile is good for uh, any personnel. We can uh, make it impact and detonate on impact in which the blast and fragmentation will defeat uh, solid objects and of course kick up a lot of dirt, then shrapnel several hundred meters injuring personnel. We can also make this uh, an airburst projectile and in that case, using a time or electronic fuse, we can allow it to detonate approximately 12 meters in the air, sending the blast and fragmentation down to the ground and very effective against uh, personnel in the open. The 105 millimeter smoke projectile is a projectile used for screening uh, friendly movement and uh, blinding the enemy. The illuminating projectile uh, used for lighting up the night sky gives us the capability if we're not using our night vision devices to put a basically a light in an area so we can see. And how it operates is when the uh, fuse functions, it'll send the charge into the uh, main canister, kicking out the uh, parachute and the cylinder, lighting up the cylinder on its exit, and the parachute will deploy, and the, the illuminant candle or will float to the ground uh, slowly, and it burns approximately 450,000 candle power for about one minute. Right here we have the uh, propellant for the 105 millimeter howitzer. How the howitzer, 105 millimeter howitzer works is the casing is used to house the propellant. In the middle of the casing, we have an igniter. And simply put, the casing is mated to the projectile with the appropriate charge to send the round down to the appropriate range. Uh, maximum charge for maximum range, and if we take charges out, we can reduce the range, whatever is ordered from the command post. The casing is then mated to the projectile, and the projectile is loaded into the chamber of the howitzer. On the order of fire, the firing pin will strike the base of the projectile, igniting the propellant charges, which in turn will create a lot of gas, which will push on the end of the projectile, or the base of the projectile. This in turn will send the projectile up the barrel, the rotating band 
will be engrooved into the lands and grooves, which are machined in the howitzer, causing the projectile to spin, enabling it to uh, cut the atmospheric conditions and accurately reach its target. Modern artillery has two specialized classes of personnel trained to work with forward maneuver groups. The first is known as an FAC, or forward air controller. They control any type of aircraft, from attack helicopters to fighter jets. Their job is to get ordnance onto targets. The second is a FU, or forward observation officer. These specialists control the fall of artillery shells and even missiles onto targets. Their accuracy is paramount. Captain Derek Crabb explains the mission of forward air controllers. A forward air controller is, or FAC as we uh, call them, is essentially uh, normally a two-man party or two-soldier party that effectively uh, coordinates any fixed wing or aviation assets uh, to strike at enemy targets. So if you could think of uh, essentially anything that flies, whether it's an attack helicopter or an A-10 or a Hornet, that's their job is to uh, essentially coordinate them with all the other ground fires as well as directing them onto the, the, the strike point or the target. So what Ford Air Controllers do and, and part of their biggest responsibility other than the actual strike itself is all the detailed coordination that happens before that. So the uh, determination of where the friendlies are, having the situational awareness to understand where your forward line of own troops is when you're under fire can be difficult. So that's A, understanding where they are. Uh, B, understanding the effects of the weapon system that's gonna be employed and where those effects are going to go based on the profile or attack profile of the, uh, of the aircraft involved. Forward observation officers are the artillery's eyes and ears on the battlefield. They help the battle commander decide what to target and how. At the artillery school in Gagetown, they've created a simulator that helps train junior forward observation officers. Captain Kathy Hare is the senior instructor at the simulator. She talked about how it works and why it's important for training forward observation officers. The FU is a key uh, player in within the uh, maneuver element, whether it's uh, with the infantry or the armoured. They're the key advisor for them on all indirect fire, uh, both lethal and non-lethal. The uh, indirect fire trainer, it's a, a computer simulation system. We can replicate various training environments. It simulates exactly uh, time of flights and, and everything very realistically as to what the, the gun's w response would be. And as well, it also replicates um, realistic target effects on, on various uh, types of targets that, that we may encounter out there. It's finally the big day. You're getting ready. Stay motivated. The culmination of weeks of intense training. Ammunition is loaded. Weapons are given a final check. Today, the artillery in both CFB Wainwright and Fort Irwin will support the infantry and armor as they make tactical attacks. All right, stand by. Stand by. Yeah. With a crack of gunfire, the attack commences. Everywhere you look, there's activity. Armored fighting vehicles attacking. Tanks firing. Soldiers clearing houses. Artillery raining down nearby suppresses counterattacks from the enemy. Like an opera or stage play, this attack is beautifully orchestrated. It's all done with a single purpose, to achieve the mission, to win in combat. 
The artillery rounds from the 5 RALC and 37 field artillery are precise and accurate. They are successfully suppressing the simulated enemy forces. Forward air controllers call in a strike by F-18s. 500-pound bombs crash into their targets. All is going as planned. They've proven they can work together. The mission is a success. Artillery, in all its capacities, has helped win this battle. Artillery has evolved a great deal from even 10 years ago. Changing demands of operations and technology have dramatically impacted the composition of the senior service of the Army. New guns, new ammunition, even new roles, such as controlling UAVs for intelligence gathering. Artillery today is one of the most progressive and important combat arms in coalition armies. I think the mission of the artillery uh, really hasn't changed. Uh, to be honest. How we achieve that and with what munitions and with whether it's aircraft or guns or mortars or our increased use of UAVs or increased use of uh, sound ranging or radars to find enemy artillery, I think those, those will constantly be updated and changed. But really, at the end of the day, if it takes us one bullet to achieve what 50 years ago took 150 bullets, uh, you know, that's a good thing. And uh, Again, with technology, that will change. However, at the end of the day, we're the battlefield hammer, and uh, I don't think that'll ever change.